Serving off the 85, but you won't This engine is actually a built 1.6 with Max Peter Ross uh, connecting rods and it used to run uh, this TDO4 which is actually hilariously enough from a T5. Uh, it's the TDO4 12T, it's not from the T5 but A5 cylinder Volvo engine. Uh, this is all the stuff that came off the car uh, which is going to friend just like the engine. Um, he's gonna be building that into his 1.6. For the chassis, um, as you've just seen, I've 3D scanned the chassis uh, with the radiator and the front crash support and the steering rack and the whole tunnel as far as possible. And that's gonna allow me to uh, compare the scans of the five cylinder uh, in a CAD software. For the scanner, I've got a, I, I got a lot of questions about which scanner I'm using. This is the Creality CR Scan Ferret. It's the scanner I've been using for the last half year. Uh, really happy with it. It's about 250, 300 euro. And uh, people often ask me like how accurate is it? And it depends, you can, <laughs> you can answer that question in many different ways. But for me, accurate enough to uh, see if my five cylinder will fit in my uh, NA chassis. I'll show the scans right now, um, how the fitment will be with the trans tunnel, the steering rack, the subframe and the front end. With the hood closed I scanned it from the underside so I could overlay the two scans and compare them and see how the hood fitment is uh, with the engine. So this is the scan I just took of the chassis, I imported it into SolidWorks 
and all of the scans that you make can be converted to STL files, which this one is. And if you open it in Softworks, it looks like this. Every time you open a scan like this in Softworks, it's quite a large file. It's, if you turn it around, you can see my computer is slightly struggling with it. To make that easier, I always go to display settings and make it shaded without lines. This way you can see it's way smoother and it's also easier to see because you don't have all of the vertices and lines showing up. There's way more color. Now you can easily differentiate. You can see the PPF in here and you can see the beginnings of the differential. So all of this is just one scan and I've t taken a second scan um, and overlaid those in this file. This is it's an assembly. There is some overlap between the two scans, one with the hood closed from the inside and one of the entire engine bay. I align those using the tunnel right here, as you can see, it almost perfectly aligns. So these two models are the Volvo engine and the ZF 6-speed. Uh, the 6-speed is actually the original 6-speed, uh, it hasn't been cut and welded uh, when it was scanned. Uh, so I've just aligned those like it is right now in the car. With these two scans I can uh, do several things uh, but the main thing for now is overlaying them in the engine bay and see how the fitment is everywhere. So here you can see all of the scans together, it's in total four scans. Um, for a second I'll remove the inside of the hood so you can see better. Clearance wise it's pretty tight, uh, especially at the front. Uh, we have to move the sway bar because it's currently hitting the front ma main crank pulley. Something cool you can do in this software is actually get a section view of your model. It doesn't actually affect the model itself, but it's just uh, so you can see what's inside. Here you can easily see the clearance we've got in the trans tunnel and the back of the bulkhead with the engine and the gearbox. At the back of the engine I'm pretty pleased with the uh, fitment we have. There's quite a bit of room left to get my fingers behind and actually tighten these fittings. Same with the top of the gearbox, it's actually pretty good. Uh, except at the back it's quite uh, narrow here. We have to maintain a gap to prevent the gearbox hitting the chassis uh, when it's vibrating. So as you can see in the front it's pretty tight, uh, not only the sway bar but also the steering rack and the subframe. The engine currently doesn't have an oil pan, uh, that's because uh, no factory one will fit without having to modify the position of the steering rack. I'll be fabricating a custom oil pan with an externally mounted oil filter housing uh, to get the fitment right. So finally for the hood or bonnet uh, clearance, I've got the second scan which can be overlaid and you can see that the front timing cover of the engine just slightly pokes into it. Uh, this scan is of course the inside of the hood which has these reinforcement ribs as you can see and we'll be uh, clearancing that uh, by cutting out this uh, section of the rib which won't have a big effect on the rigidity of the actual hood itself as we've done with uh, several swaps in the past. So that's it, uh, next time we'll be attaching the gearbox onto the engine and test fitting it in the chassis. We'll be checking out the fitment with the subframe, the steering rack, the trans tunnel, the front end, the sway bar and everything that uh, it might hit. We'll be seeing how well the scans translate to real life and from there we'll, uh, we'll start working on making engine mounts. I've already made a beginning on the engine mounts on both sides. I've made flat plates uh, that fit on the engine. Uh, from here I'll probably fabricate something to the subframe. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching.